Hey man, what's up? Can I bother you with a quick question? Awesome, thanks. So I was recently on Instagram and I saw this post about a couple of like, like two USMLE study plans. Like they have a 40 day schedule and a 60 day learning path, I believe they're called. And as you know, I just started my prep. So my question is, should I like use them? Like, are they necessary or what? Well, in my experience, study plans usually work well for three groups of people. Number one, those who are totally lost, right? Those who are just overwhelmed by the amount of information. They don't know where to start. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to study. They don't know what is important, what is not. And honestly, they're just starting to freak the hell out. Relatable. The second group of people is those who are very bad at either planning or sticking with a plan of their own, right? So here we have people who always end up creating totally unrealistic plans or spending more time creating schedules that actually using the schedules or that simply can't seem to stick with the strategies that they set for themselves. These people sometimes work really well when they have someone else or something else that gives them like a sense of structure, right? That tells them, hey, this is what you gotta do in days one, two, three, and four, and then you do this on five, and then you do this on six and seven. Now go ahead and do it. So you basically mean people who are unable to function alone. Yeah, I describe myself that way sometimes. And finally, group three is people who are in a hurry, right? Because if I have, for instance, six weeks to prep for the most important exam of my life, basically, I don't wanna waste a single minute creating and fine tuning a schedule. No, I wanna jump right into execution. I wanna take advantage of every single minute I have and not waste anything doing things that really don't matter, right? What? Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, what did you say? Yeah. Um, no waste time? Yeah. To to how do you turn this up? Yeah, 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 I totally agree. I, I don't know why, uh, what the uh, what happened to this. Uh, oh, now it's coming for here. Yeah, just let me... Um, so, um, there are two study plans, right? One that is shorter and one that is longer. So, should I just go for the shorter one and be extra efficient and... That's it? Well, but before you do, it might be good to remember that besides the obvious differences in length, these programs have totally different approaches to learning. And that's why I think that they are meant to be used by completely different types of people. Really? Yeah, I actually do. For instance, if you take a look at the 60 day learning path, you will notice that it uses a very kind of traditional approach to learning where you first watch a few video lectures, then you do a few flashcards, and then you jump into solving practice questions, like a very step forward approach, right? The 40 day schedule, on the other hand, uses something called reverse learning, which is when you start by solving practice questions, and then you move on to review the typical study material. So reverse learning, hmm, yeah, that doesn't make sense. I know you're probably very used to the typical order where you first learn something and then you get tested on it. But as it turns out, testing yourself before even reading the material has also been shown to be an effective study technique. In fact, research has shown that using this strategy might actually improve long-term retention over the typical study strategies, a finding that has been called the pre-testing effect. The pre-testing effect, hmm. Interesting. And if you think about it, in a context like the USMLE, this approach actually makes a lot of sense because it makes you focus on the subjects and skills that truly matter. How so? I mean, have you ever found yourself spending hours studying a topic, covering the entire chapter or video lecture only to discover that the exam asks the topic in a very, very specific way? For instance, emphasizing just a few details about the topic? Mm -hmm. Well, in those situations, while you realize that the extra information was good to know, it was not really essential, right? And it actually detracted you from learning the stuff and focusing on stuff that really made a difference. And so reverse learning overcomes this problem by showing you which subjects are tested and how they are tested upfront, making you realize exactly what you need to know and how you need to know it. And then after solving the questions, reverse learning gives you the opportunity to fully dive in and comprehend the topic so that you can answer correctly those types of questions moving forward. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. So according to that, the 40 day schedule is better. Well, not necessarily. You see, for the testing effect to work, you at least have to understand what you're being asked. If you don't even comprehend the questions, because let's say you're a complete beginner or because you totally forgot your basic sciences, then attempting to answer questions will be more like a game of guessing than a game of testing. So what you're saying is that if I'm a beginner, I'm better off using the 60-day learning path. But if I uh, have a little bit more experience, 
I am better off using the 40 day schedule? Actually, yes. <laughs> In fact, I do believe that the 60 day learning path is optimal for beginners as it allows them to gradually learn the topics while also incorporating some practice questions and quizzes at the end of each session. In fact, that's the way I would encourage a true beginner to study. Hmm. And on the other hand, the 40 day schedule is optimal for those who already know the basics or that are very near to the exam as it allows them to focus mostly on solving questions, which as I have stated in over 20 videos is the most important thing you can do to ace the test. Got it. Oh, and as an icing on the cake, I really like the fact that the 40 day schedule includes a self-assessment at the beginning to evaluate your baseline and a mock test at the end to train your endurance. Those were really nice touches coming from Lecturio and they will be extremely helpful for anyone who is close to presenting the exam. All right, but I have a question. There are a lot of study plans in the market, right? So why should I use the Lecturio ones specifically? Well, that's a decision only you can make, but at least for me, I find three things that I really like about the Lecturio study plans. Number one, as I said in the beginning, the big emphasis on the high yield topics. You see, the USMLE, just like most things in life, follows the Pareto principle. The what? Uh, the Pareto principle, a uh, P-A-R-E-T-O. That's right. Okay, so the Pareto principle basically says that a small fraction of the inputs is responsible for most of the outputs. For instance, in the USMLE, there are literally thousands of topics that can appear in the exam. I mean, it's an exam about everything medical, isn't it? Uh, however, and here's the kicker, only about a hundred or so of those topics make up over 60% of the questions in the exam. And so one of the great things about the lecture study plans is that they were specifically designed to ensure that the student focuses most of their attention in those important topics. And that is incredibly useful, especially if you're short on time. Okay. Reason number two is the quality and integration of the resources. You see, there are a lot of good study platforms, but some of them are only good because of their cube bank, or only good because of the videos, or only good because of the flashcards. Meanwhile, Lecturio has all of that packed into a single place. I, for myself, like that the videos are comprehensive yet concise. I like that the QBank feels very similar to the NBMEs, and I like that they offer some additional features like flashcards, assessments, and yes, even first aid references, if that's what you're into. And finally, reason number three is that the plans are structured around science-based study techniques. And this should really be a standard for every type of study plan, but unfortunately, it isn't. There are many plans, for instance, that have the students spend weeks just reading books, attending lectures, and taking notes, and they don't incorporate any sort of active or deliberate practice. No, just weeks of passive learning. Yeah, that's what I've been doing this past few weeks. That's terrible. Like, are they actively trying to make their students fail? Yeah, it's, it's a disgrace. That, that's what I always say when they ask which is always. But yeah, and here that doesn't happen. Both plans have a very good emphasis on active retrieval and the testing effect, and also space repetition. They even have like a built-in adaptive algorithm that learns what kind of things you're answering incorrectly and shows you feedback and it spaces out some quizzes to make you really strengthen those topics. It's actually really nice. Wow, yeah, that <laughs> really does sound nice. But wait, wait, wait. This sounds like too good to be true. There has to be something wrong with the plans, right? Well, to be honest, I did found something I wasn't really thrilled with, which is that uh, both plans are set up in study blocks. For instance, as you can see here, the four day schedule starts with a biochemistry block, and then it moves on to an immunology block, and then a microbiology block, and well, so on and so forth. And I sort of get it, like this seems like a way more organized approach to learning, right? And in fact, for beginners, this might actually be a very appropriate schedule. But if you look at the literature, at the scientific literature behind all of this, you will see that this learning approach, which has been called blocked or masked study, often fails in comparison and shows to be inferior to the alternative, which we call interleaved study. And yeah, I kind of get why they did this for the 60 day learning path, since beginners are more likely to use that one. But to be honest, I don't recommend that approach for the 40 day schedule, especially if you're using it as an intermediate or advanced learner. Having said that, there's a very easy fix for this, which is just to shuffle up the days, like this, for instance. And this is actually really easy to implement because thankfully, Lecturio allows you to visit any particular day in the study plan without needing to complete the others. 
This way, all you need to do is enter the planner, click any random day you previously chose to complete, and then just go ahead and do it as if that's the day you were programmed to do. And yes, as I said, this is not necessary if you're a beginner and you may also get very good results by using it as intended. But yeah, personally, I do believe that you can maximize your performance by using the plans like this. All right. I think I'll give it a go. That's awesome. But which plan are you choosing? Oh, oh no, sorry. Um, on the phone? Yeah, excuse me. Uh, keep going. I give up. What's that? A 30% discount in all of the premium lecture plans. Wow, that's awesome. But wait, where do I find it? Oh, in the video description. Okay, okay, got it.